The purpose of this video is to explain the process of recording both your OTP lessons and your demonstration lesson throughout the course. When filming, you are probably going to use either a video camera or a modern smartphone such as this. With both systems, it's very important that the audio signal is of high quality. And with both the iPhone and with some uh, video cameras, the quality of the audio signal is not going to be good enough when you move more than, say, one meter away from it, which is going to require some form of amplification system for that microphone. In the course notes, we've suggested that you buy a system something like this. And once you get that system, we're going to show you when it's unpacked, firstly, how it all goes together. So, you will have a mains cable, such as this, which you're going to put into the mains power supply, and then this will supply the microphone receiver. So, if we connect to the mains, and we can then connect to the mains socket on here. We are now powering up the microphone receiver and when we switch it on you will see that there's a number one and I will come back to that in a short time. So this is now connected. We need to now connect this to the smartphone. In order to do that we connect into the auxiliary socket on the microphone receiver. The auxiliary socket as this cable will not fit into the microphone, we'll then need to go into an adapter, such as this. And this end will now go into the headphone socket on your smartphone, as such. So, we have the microphone receiver, which is going to pick up a signal, and the signal will come from the microphone. With the microphone, transmitter, you will get something like this. This is the belt pack, so you can wear this either on a belt strap or in your pocket, and the microphone just clips onto your lapel. When you switch on the transmitter, what you should get momentarily on your indicator lights here is a channel 1, which will match your receiver. So we we'll switch on and there we have the channel 1. We can then test that our transmitter is sending a signal to the microphone uh, receiver. So if I talk into here, there's an LED indicator here which should flash red when it's receiving the signal. So talking into here with a reasonable volume or blowing gently into the microphone, you should see the LED indicator flashing red. The reason for the microphone, as mentioned, is to improve the quality of the audio signal. It is possible that using this lapel type microphone, you will not get a good signal throughout the video filming process, in which case, if there is too much background noise, you will need to move to a system like this, the headphone mic, uh, to get a better audio signal. All of this equipment will be demonstrated in use later on in this particular video. I've now set up the equipment that we mentioned before in the video into the actual teaching situation that I'm going to be using. So, the first thing that I need to ensure is that everything that I'm going to be filming is within the frame of the video shot. So, I have on this side a clock which hopefully will be in shot and the clock is absolutely necessary during the video sessions for both your demonstration lesson and for every one of your OTP lessons. The reason for the clock is that you are not able to edit your filming. This is for assessment purposes and so for every video that you do shoot there needs to be a clock in frame to show that your video is real time when you upload it to the system. Secondly, you need to make sure that everything that's going to be used in your lesson, for example the clock, 
the whiteboard, and obviously you is within the frame shown on your camera. So the smartphone is now set up. What I'm going to do is to check that frame uh, by going behind the camera and making sure that everything is OK. Before I move out of the shot, I've just mentioned that I've already put some tape on the floor so that I know when I'm in the frame and when I'm out of it. This is important because you need to make sure that when you are going around the class, when you're monitoring during activities and so forth, you know whether or not you're going to be in the frame of the video. So I'll now move out of frame from here, around the back of the camera, and I'll now check that I can see clearly my clock on the one side and the board. And you'll notice on the top of the board, I have written, I am reading. I need to be able to see that clearly on my smartphone image so that I know that the size of writing that I'm using is going to be suitable for the filming. I'll now move back into the frame. And I should now be in the middle and everything is ready to go. So I have my clock, I have my board available, and I'm now going to run through some of the things you should and should not do during the filming process. I'm now going to run through some points related to the actual filming process itself. As I've already mentioned, probably the most important part of the filming is the audio signal. Obviously, the video signal is very important, the picture that we get, but there won't really be a problem with any modern video or uh, smartphone in terms of the picture. The audio signal is very, very important. I'd like, firstly, to demonstrate that actual difference between using this type of equipment and using the camera on its own. So what I'm going to do, I'll continue talking whilst I come to the camera, and I will take out the socket connection to the microphone system. I'll continue talking and come back to this position. I'll continue talking and go back to the microphone and plug it back in. And you'll then be able to see the difference in audio quality. At the moment, I'm standing about two meters from the microphone. See the degradation of the signal as I move away from the camera. I'm now continuing towards the camera and I'm going to actually unplug continue to talk as I move back to my teaching position, which is going to be here. And now what you should hear is that the signal is very, very low quality. I will now move back and plug back in to the system. So I'm moving back towards the camera and I'm about to plug back into the system. And what is a clear signal as I move around within my teaching space. Secondly, in addition to that audio signal being of good quality, it's important that your visual picture is of good quality. And one of the main things here to consider is that your camera is actually secure. If your camera is not secure and it's vibrating in some way, then you'll see that shake as you've just seen on the actual camera itself. Next, it's important for the assessment purpose of both the OTP lesson and the demonstration lesson, that you get the whole lesson on the video. In that case, you need to start filming before you start the actual lesson, and you need to continue filming until the lesson is completely finished. Also, for the demonstration lesson, it is important to appreciate a number of things. Firstly, you won't have any students and therefore, what would be the normal timing of your lesson will not be the same as in a, an actual OTP lesson. During an actual lesson, your students will be doing activities. During your demonstration lesson, you have no students. So those activity times will be much reduced. So for your demonstration lesson, a couple of points to consider. Firstly, have everything available for your demonstration lesson that you would need in an actual lesson. For example, your lesson plan, your materials for both your study 
and activate activities and any other visual aids that you would need to teach that particular lesson. If your lesson is the straight arrow ESA, then you would be starting with an engage activity. Obviously, with no students, it's difficult to show how that activity would take place. All you need to do is to pretend that the students are there and to effectively answer your own questions. So, a quick example. Let's imagine that I was going to be teaching a particular grammar tense, and I wanted to do my engage activity to get them talking and thinking in English, and at the same time, producing some information which I could use when I start the study phase of the lesson. So, I'm going to pretend I have three students, A, B, and C. And I'm going to ask them some questions to get their answers up onto the board. So, for example, shown on my actual OTP or demonstration lesson would look as follows. Student A, can you tell me what you are doing right now? Thank you. Student A says... I am listening. So I write that information on the board. Make sure, again, that the writing is legible and that you can see clearly on the video what it's saying. Secondly, I'm going to say student B. Could you tell me what student A is doing? And you can't use his name. Very good. So student B has responded... is listening. And in that way, we're demonstrating what actually happened during the lesson, although there is no one there. Now, don't worry too much how it actually looks on the video. It's going to look strange because there is no one to actually answer the questions, but that's not a problem. What we're interested in is to see that you're actually following the process of the lesson. You would then move on from there to your study, and in your study phase, you're going to be doing activities. Obviously, again, there are no students, so we need you to demonstrate how the activity is going to work. Then, again, ask questions from students A, B, and C as to how they're going to carry out the activity. And you would then say, please start the activity. Leave a short pause to show that the activity is now underway, and then you might go out of shot to monitor students A, B, and C. That monitoring process needs to take place for a short time, then come back into the frame, and then continue on with the feedback from your activity. Do exactly the same for the activate process, and you will then have your lesson complete. As we've mentioned before, please don't be concerned about buying expensive equipment or having professional quality video equipment. Here you can see the actual setup that I used in making this video where the camera is purely and simply taped to a stand. If you were to do that same thing on a table or on a chair, then that would be fine. All you need is a secure camera. So please don't be worried about the actual setup buying expensive equipment. One final point to consider is that when you're setting up your camera, to make sure that it's not pointing directly at a light source, otherwise you'll just end up silhouetted against that source and it will look as you can see now on the screen.